and welcome back to another episode of Girls Do Sport, the bite-sized guide to women's sport here in Scotland. In each programme, we have focused on several different sports and in many different ways. And we have showcased what the sport is about, its key people and what the future holds for the sport here in Scotland. For today's viewing, it's all about basketball. Later on, we'll be speaking to our wonderful studio guests, Robin Lewis and Rosanna Reynolds of Caledonia Pride, and Gemma Lunsdane, who plays for Scotland Under-23's wheelchair basketball team, as well as having a look at what our reporters have been up to elsewhere. And you can get involved in the conversation using the hashtag GirlsDoSport. Scotland has not traditionally been a country synonymous with basketball. More frequently associated with our neighbours down south or our cousins across the pond, the sport has grown steadily in Scotland over the last 30 years. Women's participation in basketball has gradually increased during that time, with a recent study from Basketball Scotland finding that 30% of all members are female. Findings also include that 72% of young women choose to stay in basketball due to the social aspects playing the game provides. And Basketball Scotland has created opportunities for women at competitive levels, all the way from the under 10s to the senior levels and the performance pathway is now the same as the male side. In addition, the decision to introduce Caledonia Pride, the first ever Scottish women's team, into the Women's British Basketball League at the start of last season has proved a resounding success and the Pride are going from strength to strength both on and off the court. In association with Basketball Scotland and Heriot Watt University, the Pride have a secure home at sports complex The Orium in Edinburgh and a loyal support which is only growing after the Scots debut season. Laura went along to the Orium to see the Pride in action in their second home game of the season in the WBBL against Oakland's Wolves. Photo shoot done, warm up done and ready for action. Caledonia Pride are in this hall behind me getting ready for a home game in front of a sold out crowd. They're Scotland's first professional women's basketball team and they're about to tip off. So let's go inside and get a slice of the action. After a strong start from Pride, the Wolves went on a run of 11 and 2. In front of a supportive home crowd, Pride continued to drive the Wolves up and down the court, and the baskets followed. Kicking off the second quarter, the Wolves engaged in a 19 4 run, with guard Kelly Ring dominating the court. Pride kept the Wolves at bay, however, for the majority of the third quarter, but they came back strong, hunting Pride down as the game drew to a close. They went on a 10-0 run that dashed hopes of a Pride victory, but with the final score at 69-55 for the Wolves, the Pride rallied together and told us what it's like to play for a national team and why it's important to them. You know, we're getting a lot of girls along to the, young girls along to the games, we're getting all the national squads in and every week we have a different team coming in and um, being our mascots and walking us out. So I think a lot of people get involved with that. And, you know, we're also trying to get out into the community and get lots of more girls involved. So I think definitely platforms like this are really useful. We've got a great bond. Um, we really come together. We're such like a team ethic. There's such a good um, like work kind of ethic in our team so I think that's really makes it enjoyable to play. Like we are like a team it's not just an individual it's like we are out for team goals and when people make the team of the week and everything they're the first to be like this is a team award like no one is out for themselves it is all team program and a team goal not I want to be top scorer I want to be top rebounder it is you know we're in this together. Caledonia Pride, the name Pride uh, is so yeah. fitting for the team because that's what Especially the girls like represent. Especially the Scottish team in the league. It's, like, it's brilliant. Yeah. It is good. And like being younger, like age doesn't matter on the team. Like we have a couple like kids that are still in school. And like with me being one of the younger ones last year, like age really doesn't matter. Like if you're on the court, you're one of the five on the court. And you know, we trust each other to do our jobs. And that's how we get things done. We're a team. Well, the girls didn't get the result they were hoping for here today. But what we have seen is teamwork, love for their sport and pride. For Girls Do Sport, I'm Laura Smith.
and some of the players are in the studio with us now, Robin Lewis and Rosanna Reynolds. Thanks for being here, guys. Thank you. Thank you. So it's been a great start to the season this year, obviously with a record of 3-2 and two and you've beaten the, the reigning champions, Nott Nottingham Wildcats. What do you think's changed since last season? Um, I think it's more like a process. Like We built a lot on last season. So last season we were the newcomers. We had a lot to learn about the league and not many of our players had much experience, whereas now we've got that year under our belt and we started to really improve towards the end of last year. So by keeping a lot of players from last year and adding a few new ones, we've been able to kind of hit the ground running and sort of start a bit stronger than we were last year, I think. And you've got the Orium as your prime venue now. What's that been like? Great. I mean, um, it's fantastic there. It's a brand new facility and, you know, we get a lot of regular fans there, which is nice, um, especially in comparison to the rest of the league, actually. We've got quite a good reputation for our fan base. So, yeah, it's a great place, to be fair. And do you think last season, you know, when you didn't have the Orium and you had all those away games at the start of the year, a lot of travel, you know, do you think that uh, those experiences brought you together closer as a team? Yeah, I mean, obviously Rosie wasn't there at the start of last year, but it was a rough introduction to the Rugby BBL. <laughs> um, we did a lot of travelling, um, usually multiple times a week, um, and we travel on quite a small bus. So you didn't really have any other options. Like You had to talk to the person next year. A lot of us have been playing together a long time. So I think definitely like when you face that much adversity together, by the end of the year, we were really used to sort of working together. And when things didn't quite go our way, we'd sort of battle through. So yeah, definitely did. Robin, Rosanna, thank you for coming in to talk to us today. Next, our reporter Andrew Scott went along to East Bank Academy in Shettleston to follow Glasgow City Basketball Club, who are running one of their training camps for youngsters. They had some very special guests on hand from Caledonia Pride to help raise the profile of women's basketball in the community. I went to East Bank Academy to find out what Glasgow City Basketball Club has to offer. I met with Alistair Geddes, who told me more. We've recently uh, started our girls' programme. Um, we have uh, created satellite clubs in four of our major schools in our catchment area in the hope of uh, providing great opportunities for youngsters to get involved in basketball. We've had uh, good take up from the girls at a younger age group and we're hoping to maintain that throughout through the under 14s and under 16s and hopefully get them involved in the regional development league and the national development league. Uh, and keep the girls involved throughout. We've seen it successfully, successful in other areas um, and we finally had the uh, uh, support to enable us to set these, these satellite clubs up in our four catchment area schools. Um, so it's just started this year and uh, the, the focus is to have monthly tournaments down here at East Bank where the kids get exposed to uh, competitive basketball at an earlier age. I think it's really important for, for young girls to have positive role models that they can actually look up to. Um, Caledonia Pride has given the girls in Scotland something to aspire to. Um, girls that uh, myself have seen play in Scottish National League and now they're actually getting an opportunity to train and play basketball full time. It's a fantastic move forward and uh, last season we were uh, privileged enough to be invited through as Club of the Month and just hearing the girls, girls just talk they were speaking about Sarah Thompson and Robin Lewis the same way some people were talking about the BBL stars and I think that's marvellous to hear. We spoke to the girls to see what they thought. I'm getting a signed photo of Trisha Oaks. Mm. <laughs> yes, I like the atmosphere of basketball games. It's just a lot nicer than some other sports. And one of our coaches, Jim, just came around to the primary school, to after school basketball, and we enjoyed it, so we came here. Yeah. And then we stayed. I knew one of the coaches here and because I was tall he told me that I should come down and see what it was like. And um, we're just down visiting the kids at Glasgow City's basketball camp in this October week. We have a lot going through Scotland. We don't know all of them obviously, yeah. but um, we had ties with these ones, this basketball camp here. So we came down and we thought that we'd interact with the girls and they're also going to be part of our team of the week at our game at the weekend. So it's good to come down and meet them before and like build a real relationship yeah. with them and get to know them and then they'll come down and watch us. I think it's definitely growing right now, the game for women especially, yeah. but um, I think it can still do better obviously and I definitely think coming down and seeing us play really helps the girls out and I think it makes encourages them to try and want to play to a higher level as well. I don't think as a nation that we actually encourage girls to uh, just be natural and normal in sport. I think girls have greater expectations placed on them through media etc about how they're meant to be and how they're meant to act. I think we're very very lacking in allowing girls to just be athletes and accept that they can be athletes and be the same as everyone else. 
I think this idea that they've got to be uh, models or look a specific way or have a certain amount of friends in social media, etc. No, that's not a nonsense. It goes with girls at that young age. The media plays a big part in it. And I think if we can encourage girls just to be accepted as athletes, I think that would be half the battle. That was Andrew Scott at East Bank Academy. Next, I went to catch up with Scottish Women Warriors Wheelchair Basketball Club, who have just celebrated their third birthday, as they held a training session at Jordan Hill School in Glasgow. That was quite a tongue twister, that one, wasn't mm. it? Basically, I, I was involved in setting up the basketball club on the back of um, seeing, not having done a lot of activity for a number of years and going along to the Commonwealth Games and realising what I was missing since I had started to use a wheelchair and not been able to do sport on a regular basis. The folk that were here tonight playing, there are people from the Scottish Government, um, the civil servants came along and we had a challenge match. Um, but generally it's all women that play, we're an all women's team, we are the only all women's team. And you've got people from all walks of life here, you know, you've got um, youngsters, anybody from the age of 16 and over up to those of us who are older and those of us who are older again. And so, I mean, we, we have a whole range of ages and actually it doesn't matter your age, it doesn't matter your ability. What matters is that you just want to have good fun, you want to come along, we're a friendly bunch and we, you know, even if you think you can't do it, you'll be amazed at what you do when you try. I gave, came and tried out uh, for the wheelchair basketball and Anne-Marie just came up to me, she was like, do you want to come along? I was like, I don't think I'd be very good, but she says, oh, we're all rubbish anyway, so, so I came along and never, I've not looked back since, it's been brilliant, absolutely brilliant. The Women Warriors are amazing, it's, it's just made such a difference to my life, and it's not just the sport, it's just the whole thing, the whole team spirit and stuff like that, it's brilliant. Um, I tried it at one of their tryout sessions on a Sunday at the Kelvin Hall, and ever since then I've been coming every Monday night, ever since then. It's been amazing getting to, like, get to know different people with like similar disabilities that I have and just to be able to interact and do a whole new sport and like learn a whole new skill. I had nobody in my life basically uh, and I came here and now I've got loads of pals and loads of friends so it's great, it's brilliant. So it's not just about the sport, it's about everything else. You know what, it's much more than the basketball, it's just for the camaraderie, it's the fun, it's the going away for a weekend together and having a bit of a laugh, it's about, you know, remembering each other's birthdays and celebrating good things that we all experience together, it's about those shared experiences, those friendships, things that are even more than the basketball. You know, sometimes you think you can't do something and then you give it a go and you realise you're hooked and you absolutely love it and, you know, apart from all the fun that goes on, you are actually keeping yourself physically fit and active and that's really important. And we now welcome Gemma Lumsdane to the studio. Hi Gemma, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. No problem. So first of all, just tell us a bit about your sport and what you do. Um, so I'm a wheelchair basketball player and I play for the Scotland Under-23 National Wheelchair Basketball Squad. And you've got uh, quite the sporting record. It's not just basketball. Could you, you know, what are the, some of your proudest achievements in, in um, the sports? So I play wheelchair rugby as well. Probably... Uh, some of my proudest achievements have been uh, winning the Celtic Cup in 2014 and 2016. Um, I've won a various amount of awards which have been pretty cool. Um, and yeah, just um, being selected for various teams and being given lots of different opportunities. And you're only 20 years old as well, which is, and you've done so much. Um, what, do you, what was it like? Because you were actually picked to play for Scotland, weren't you? Yeah, so I was um, I was picked out uh, three weeks before the competition to to play in the school games. Um, having no previous wheelchair basketball experience, I'd only played wheelchair rugby league. But um, so Tina Gordon, who is the basketball development officer, got in uh, in contact with um, the founder of our club to see if anybody is on in the certain like age range. So although I never played um, wheelchair basketball. There's a lot of different transferable skills. So I had um, three weeks before my first ever game, which was representing my country, which was absolutely mental. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. It's quite, a, it's quite a rough game, isn't it? Have you ever had any bad injuries? Um, not so far, touch wood. I mean, it, it's supposed to be non-contact, but it's, it's pretty brutal. But it that's pretty brutal yeah, when you absolutely, watch it. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> that's one of my favourite aspects of the game, to be honest. And is so. there any other sport you know where you would end up your with such short notice and representing your country. <laughs> I know, it's, it's, I can't, I can't, I still, even now when I think about it, it's been a couple of years and I still can't quite get my head around the fact, but, you know, it's just great to 
have people that have given me that opportunity and they obviously had that belief in me and saw something. So, so we've uh, we've heard, you know, from from other basketball players and and the girls from Caledonia Pride as well about just how strong the social aspect is for basketball. Is you know, is that the same for yourself? Do you think that's just as important? Yeah, I think um, especially in wheelchair basketball, um, like it's a massive community, and for a lot of disabled people who play, like we feel quite isolated and stuff. So it gives us a chance to like spend time with people who are like us, and you know. Um, get to do something, get out and about and, you know, be active, which is really important. So yeah. their sense of community is obviously very important. Yeah, right? no, definitely. Like, our, our teams are great. You know, we're all like a big family and, um, you know, we help each other through different issues that we may, might face. You know, um, if we've had a bad day off the court, we get on the court and we just take it out and play and it really helps us. And you know, get over things that are maybe going on. Yeah, which so are tough. you've got your basketball family, and you've also got your family at home. What have they been like supporting you? Oh, um, you know, I I wouldn't be where I am today without my family. Like my mum is just, she drives me everywhere. She she drives so much, and you know, they're really supportive. You know, they'll they'll take so many hours and dedicate towards my training and stuff. Um, and also, my mum's the team manager of the Scotland squad so helps, obviously yeah. without her and <laughs> um, like all the organization and stuff wouldn't be able to happen so and what you know what advice would you give to any any young uh, women wanting to get involved in wheelchair basketball i would say you know just give it a go you never know where it can take you like i wouldn't have said to the like, national team before, perhaps <laughs> maybe yeah. maybe you know before i wouldn't have said like where i would i wouldn't have guessed where i would be at this point in time so you know give it a go you never know what happen and you'll you won't regret it absolutely so do you have anybody that inspires you um i think the wheelchair basketball development officer for basketball scotland tina gordon is probably one of my biggest inspirations i think the way that she helps develop athletes both on the court and off the court is really inspiring and she always believes in you and motivates you even when you maybe don't in believe in yourself so. is that a challenge that you quite face is there a, a sort of a self-confidence issue there is that something you have to overcome I think for a lot of disabled people it's having that confidence you know to uh, in the like off the court you know in real life we, we might face some difficulties whether that's like access or just having the same opportunities and um, that able-bodied people have so having that confidence to try something new and even having that confidence in our own abilities something that a lot of disabled people and young people not just disabled people and um, especially girls face so have you been able to see any girls that have come into the sport and then you know you've then subsequently seen that confidence grow yeah i've seen i've coached quite a few girls you know that have come in been really shy and not had a lot of confidence in themselves and they've just grown into uh, such inspiring young women and it's really great to see Fantastic. So what's the what does the future hold for you? What's next? You've already um, achieved so much, so like I can't think of anything else. <laughs> um, well, I'm at university, so I'm hoping to graduate. And then um, I want to work in disability sport and just to help change lives through sport and basketball. So, yeah, that's the plan anyway. Just keep right up the good work. Yeah, well, thanks so much for being here today and coming in to talk no about problem. your passion for basketball. Thank you so much. It's now time for some questions from our guests in the studio audience. Um, our first question is from Amelia. So what would you say is one of the challenges for girls in sports and how have you managed to overcome that challenge? I, I would say one of um, the main barriers for girls is having that self-confidence and like issues with body images and stuff because when you're a certain age obviously um, you know you don't really feel confident in the way you look and having to you have to try and embrace who you are um, you know, when I was younger, I, I didn't really accept who I was and, you know, but then you just got to overcome it. And I think sport is, um, you know, such a tool to help girls embrace who they are, you know, and love their bodies and be who they're meant to be, I guess. <laughs> Fantastic. Thanks for that. And our next question is from Sunny. Yeah. So do you think your sport gets the recognition it deserves? Um, that's a really good question. I think... Over the past couple of years since London 2012 was a game changer for not only wheelchair basketball but um, for disability sport um, you know, and the awareness and recognition that we're getting is improving but obviously we have a long way to go and you know the end goal would 
they should have like disability sport and wheelchair basketball on the same level of recognition as able body sports. And uh, next question from Sarah. Yeah. So, what's the best thing about playing uh, wheelchair basketball? Ah, oh, um, to be honest, I think just playing in a team, you know, working together to achieve um, goals and um, being able to see people and help people to develop like on the court so we'll all work together to achieve the same goals and our last question is from george yeah so do you think that uh, women's basketball and wheelchair basketball in particular deserves more sort of like television coverage that sort of like the euro leagues and the nba would get um no like i think i think um coverage and the the way that women are represented in the media is something that um again we're making progress but we've still got a long way to go so but things like girls do sport really help to push and break the barriers um, to, to the media representation for women. Thank you to our studio audience. Remember, you can join the conversation by using the hashtag Girls Do Sport. And now it's time for a bit of fun. Over our nine episodes, we're going to see who can fit in the most words about their sport in just 15 seconds. So Gemma is going to have a shot at it today. So Gemma, if you can just look directly down the camera and as quickly as possible, just tell us why basketball is the best sport to play. It's amazing, exhilarating, exciting. Um, it's incredible. <laughs> um, it's fast paced. It's fierce. It's fun. It's um, hardcore. It's um, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not really. All right, that's it. Time's up. Great effort, <laughs> Emma. <laughs> We're going to add that score to our leaderboard, and you got 27. So well done. And you can see all of the scores from each episode so far on our Facebook page at Scottish Women in Sport. And that's all we have time for today. But just before we go, we'll let you know what's happening across the sporting world in Scotland over the next few weeks or so. For more information about these events and others, head over to sportonspec.co.uk. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Girls Do Sport, brought to you by the Scottish Women in Sport and the sports journalists of the University of the West of Scotland. We'd also like to thank our brilliant partners at Brandoth for making everything look fabulous and Sport on Spec. Keep the conversation going using the hashtag Girls Do Sport. But for now, thanks for watching. Bye.